Okay, today we're going to be going over chapter 12, section 1, and in this section we are going to use properties of tangents. This section is super vocab heavy, so it's important that you understand the vocab words because you need to understand the vocab words in order to do the problems. So focus on the vocab for this section. So first we have a circle, which is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point in that plane. The center is that given point. So in this circle that we have here, our center, which is the center of the circle, and all of these points on the circle are equidistant from the center. Our radius is the segment whose endpoints are the center and any point on the circle. So here, all of these lines that I drew that go from the center to the edge of the circle, those would all be radiuses. The plural of a radius is radii, so these would all be radii of the circle. Okay, and we have more vocab. So we have a chord, secant, diameter, and tangent. A chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So here we would have an example of a chord where it doesn't go through the center, but its endpoints are on the circle. The diameter is a chord that contains the center. So the diameter does go through the center of the circle. Next, we have a secant, which is a line that intersects the circle in two points. So a chord and a secant are super similar, but the only difference is the chord is a segment and a secant is a line. So the secant goes through, but the chord stops on the edges of the circle. And then last, we have a tangent, which is a line in the place of a circle that intersects the circle in exactly one point called the point of tangency. So here we'd have a circle. Our tangent intersects at one point, which would be this point here, and this point would be our point of tangency. So that point where the circle and the line intersect is our point of tangency. On this slide, we have an example of each of these, so we have a chord, which is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. Our diameter would go through the center of the circle, so let's say that would be our center of the circle. The diameter passes through that. We know that half of the diameter is our radius. Our secant goes through two points on the circle, but it's a line, so we see our secant goes through it, and it has those arrows, which tells us it's a line, and our tangent touches our circle at exactly one point. And that one point would be our point of tangency. Okay, ready for the next slide? So next we have common internal versus common external tangent lines. So if we draw a segment connecting the centers of the circles, if the segment intersects the common tangent, so here if we have, we're going to draw a segment that intersects the centers. If it intersects the common tangent, then it is an internal tangent. So in this one, we see that those two lines are intersecting, so it's an internal tangent. If it doesn't intersect, so in this one, we connect the, the centers, and our tangent doesn't intersect with this line, then it is an external tangent. Next, we have congruent and concentric circles. So congruent circles are circles that have congruent radii, so they would be the same size circle. And concentric circles, so this is concentric. So concentric circles 
lie in the same plane and have the same center. So this here would be an example of concentric circles because they have the same center. Next, tangent circles. So we have coplanar circles, which we learned what coplanar meant in chapter one. Coplanar means that they lie in the same plane. So coplanar circles that are tangent to the same line at the same point. So both of these would be examples of coplanar circles because they are tangent to the same line at the same point. So these two are tangent at that point. These two would be tangent to this line at this point. So these are two examples of coplanar circles. Next, we have our first theorem. In a plane, a line tangent to a circle if and only if the line is perpendicular to a radius. So in a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if the line is perpendicular to a radius of the circle at the point of tangency. So here we would have our radius AB. Our line that's tangent would be BC. And these two lines would be perpendicular. So if BC is tangent to circle A, then AB is perpendicular to BC. So perpendicular meaning that this is a 90 degree angle. Which in our book, this isn't theorem 10.1, but the numbers don't matter. So again, this isn't theorem 10.2, but it doesn't matter. So we have tangent segments from a common external point are congruent. So we have our tangent segment AB and our tangent segment CB. And since they share this common point, AB is congruent to BC. So AB is congruent to BC. Okay, now we have a, another example. So this is two examples in one. So first we're gonna look at A. If OR is equal to six, so our radius of this circle is six, and OT is equal to eight, then RT is equal to what? So since OT is tangent to the circle and OR is our radius, we know that this is a 90 degree angle. So we have a little right triangle here. So we can do the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that six squared plus eight squared is equal to, let's call RT X, so X squared. So six squared is 36 plus 64 is equal to X squared. So this would be 100 is equal to x squared. If we take the square root of both sides, we get 10 is equal to x. So RT is equal to 10. Any questions on that example? Okay, I'm going to erase it so we can do the next one. Wait, Ms. Carver, wait, 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 wait. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so in our next example, 
it says if the measure of angle ORT is 45, so we have this angle here is 45 degrees, and OT is equal to 4, then RT is equal to what? So we're trying to find RT again. So here, since this angle is 45, and angle R and angle T add up to 90, since we have a right triangle, that would mean that angle T is equal to 45 degrees also. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which I'm going to just draw an example of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So if our legs are x, then our hypotenuse would be x square root 2. So since our legs are 4, that would make our hypotenuse 4 square root 2. So RT would be equal to 4 square root 2. Can I move on to the next page? So wait, wouldn't that mean that the side x on the 45, 45, 90 triangle would be 4 as well? Yeah, like, so okay. our radius here, OR, would also be 4. Okay, example 3. Name a line tangent to circle P, but not circle O. So we need to look at our example. So we need a line that's tangent, so it touches circle P at one point, but it's not tangent to circle O, so that line would be this one. Because it's tangent to circle P, but it's not tangent to circle O. So that line would be O, B. Next, name the common external tangent to circle O and circle P. So our common external tangent means that it doesn't go in between them. So if we connected our circles with a line through the middle, it would not intersect with this line. So that would be line CD. Okay, and our last example, name the common internal tangent to circle O and circle P. So internal would mean that it does intersect with this line that we go through the middle of the circles with. So that would be line AD, because we see that AD is tangent to both circles and it intersects with that line in the middle. So line AD. When would AD. you use like line PC? Line PC? Um, that would ask, like, the question would ask when it's tangent to circle O, but not tangent to circle P. Oh. Okay, and we have one more slide. So example four. We have circle M and circle N are tangent at P. So that means that they touch at this point P. PR and SR are tangents to circle N. So if PR and SR are both tangents to N, that would mean that PR, so I'm just going to write that on the side, PR would be equal to SR. Circle N has a diameter of 16. Wait, how does that make them equal? If they're tangent to the same circle, so we got that from this sentence here, PR and SR are tangents to circle N. So if they're tangent to the same circle at the, and they have one common point there, then they're equal. Oh, okay. So circle N has a diameter of 16. So if we draw a line through the middle of circle N, which this N is not very in the middle, but we're just going to pretend that it is. So our diameter would be 16. Actually, I'm going to draw the line there. 
so you can see. So our diameter is 16, PQ is 3, and QR is 12. So first we need to find what PM is. So PM is this little segment here. So PM is a radius of circle M. We can find what the diameter of circle M would be because the diameter of circle M would be half of the diameter of circle N. So if this whole thing is 16. We know that this part, so this part here would be eight because it's half. And that would make this part here four because four would be half of eight. So PM would be four. Next, we need to find MQ. So MQ, we can draw this line here. We know that this point of tangency and our radius form a right angle. It's kind of hard to tell there because it's not exact, but we know that that's a right angle. I'm going to redraw this triangle over here so we can see it a little bit better. So we have a triangle that looks like this. This is our right angle. PQ is 3 and PM is 4. Well, this triangle is really not drawn to scale, but we know it's a right triangle. So what we can do here is the Pythagorean theorem. So we have 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to x squared, and x would be this length of MQ. So we have 9 plus 16 is equal to x squared. 9 plus 16 is 25 is equal to x squared. We take the square root of both sides, so that would give us 5 is equal to x. So mq is 5. Next, we need to find the length of PR. So PR is oops, this segment, which we see that PQ is 3 and QR is 12. So we just add these two together, which would give us PR is 15. And here we know that PR is congruent to SR because they're both tangents at the same point. So that would make SR 15 also. Next, we're looking for NS. So N is our center of the circle. S is our point of tangency. So this is just a radius of circle n. So we know that the diameter of circle n is 16, so the radius would be 16 divided by 2. So ns would be 8. Okay, and our last one is nr. We're going to draw a line from N to R. We know that this angle here is formed by a radius and our tangent, so it makes a right angle. So we have another right triangle. So I'm going to redraw that triangle over here just so we can see it a little bit better. So it kind of looks like this. That is awful. So it looks like this. We know that this is 15 and this is 8. So we're trying to find our hypotenuse. So we're going to do 8 squared plus 15 squared is equal to x squared. 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is 225. That's equal to x squared. 
64 plus 225 is 289. We can take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 289 is 17. But you guys will be able to use your calculator again for the next quiz, so we can do all of this in the calculator. So we know that NR is 17. Ms. Carver, the right angle is on the right because um, the 8 is making, because the radius of 8 is making, a, is making a, the base or whatever. Yeah, so remember the okay. right angle is always going to be formed with the radius and the tangent. So the tangent is where the, it touches the line at one point. So this is our tangent. So we have a tangent here and a tangent here. So our radius, where it intersects with the tangent, that's where the right angle is formed. So here we would have a radius. And where it intersects with that tangent is where the right angle is formed. Ms. Carver, what's the plural of a radius? Radii. So it's spelled R-A-D-I-I. -I. Do you guys have any other questions? All right, so remember the notes are due. I gave you guys 15 minutes after class to upload them. So they're doing like 25 minutes, but you should be done with them. So turn them in right away so you don't forget. If you guys have no other questions, you're free to go. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Bye, Ms. Carver. Bye, guys.